Greetings, fleshy mammals, and welcome to my first ever official Jump Force video. This is not the beta, this is the full game. I actually ended up picking up the Ultimate Edition, and well, I got to play it, and here are my thoughts on the full release of the game. Now, they have changed quite a bit since the beta, so yeah, let's get into it. Let's go! I'll erase you here. Alright, so let's start off with something fairly simple, the hub world. Now, the hub world is actually a lot bigger than I initially thought it was in the beta. It is actually pretty damn big, and luckily they do have some vehicles for you to ride in in the hub world. Unfortunately, I actually don't have one, but... I digress. So within this hub world, there are actually multiple different areas. There's a mission area where you speak to the main guy, uh, story mode leader, whatever the hell he is. Honestly, I'm not that far in the story mode, but it's a pretty cool area. Um, there's also different areas on the map for Naruto, One Piece, and Dragon Ball. And a little side note, there's actually a little highway that connects all of them together, which is actually pretty damn cool in my opinion, and I think that's intended for the vehicles. So one of my biggest concerns regarding the hub world initially was the premium shop, and it seems to have been removed almost entirely from the hub world, which is a good thing, but I do expect it to be coming back at some point when the game releases to everybody else and not just the Ultimate Edition users. But overall, the hub world seems to be pretty good. Everything seems to be pretty well placed as well, with the missions being placed a little bit off to the side because everyone already knows that they're in there for the battles, everyone wants to battle, which is why the battle area is placed dead center in the hub world, and it's a big area. You got the offline battles and the online battles, which we will talk about later, but first let's talk about the key missions. Alright, so where to begin with the key missions? Well, first of all, when you first start up the game, it's a extremely slow start, which is part of the key missions by the way completely unskippable cutscenes which for me personally is a negative because I tend to skip all the cutscenes for anime arena fighters because um, I'm just there to get the rewards at the end of the story mode that's that's all it's really there for for me so I just complete the story mode just rush it and then I go straight into the uh, online battles but you cannot skip any of the cutscenes at all in this story mode uh, however, after the first chapter, they go from being fully voice-acted um, cutscenes to text cutscenes, which is a big downgrade, even for people who actually want the story mode. It's, it's, it's really weird why they would give only the first chapter uh, fully voice-acted cutscenes, but whatever. I'm assuming they're going to bring back those fully voice-acted cutscenes later in the story as well, but for now, I'm just getting these text ones, which makes it a lot easier just to skip through it all, but um, the story mode actually also reminds me a lot of Xenoverse. As far as like how the bad guys are, it's basically like this. Good guy is bad and has red glowing eyes. You beat up the good guy. Good guy becomes good again. It, it's basically like that and it reminds me a lot of uh, Xenoverse and Xenoverse 2. It's it's just really weird, honestly. That that's really where I'm. That's really where I'm kind of like sitting with uh, the story mode. I don't feel like it's good, but it's also not too bad. It's kind of like one of those things that you'd play through. Um, it's it's just kind of there, in my opinion. It's just not that great. Um, also, the basic enemies are more or less the same as Dragon Ball Fighters basic enemies. You know, those basically they're little dark people. Uh, weak, dark people, and they have red glowing eyes. This time they're called Venoms, so yeah, that, that that's cool, I guess. Alright, now let's, uh, let's talk about the side missions really quick. Alright, so I'm not even gonna sugarcoat this one. The side missions are <laughs> basically parallel quests. Uh, they definitely do remind me a lot of Xenoverse, but that's actually not a bad thing because Xenoverse had a really good side quest system with the rewards, well Xenoverse 2 did, and it basically it's more of the same here. It's, it's uh, very structured as well, where you actually have to pick a difficulty and then you just go through the difficulties doing each of the missions. 
Now, you get rewards like moves and clothing and all this stuff. There's also like little side objectives that you gotta do, like complete the mission as Naruto, win with 60% of your health left, um, get an 8 hit combo, you know, stuff like that. There's those little uh, side objectives that you do that give you extra bonus points. I think if you get S rank, you get extra um, rewards, but I'm actually not too sure on that because I don't think I've gotten S rank yet. I'm actually not sure. Um, some of these actually go straight to your inventory, and from what I've experienced uh, with the Costume Hunter or something like that, I think it's called Costume Hunter, but I did that one first, and all of the rewards went straight to the shop, so I can now buy certain costumes from the shop, so it seems like some rewards go straight to your inventory, such as moves and stuff like that, and then others go straight to the shop for you to purchase with your gold, which, by the way, is actually a pretty fair way of having the shops done, in my opinion, um, but yeah, we'll get into that at some other time. So the side missions overall, I feel like, are just really fun to do. They're pretty simple as well. Um, if you enjoyed Xenoverse 2's parallel quests, well, you're probably going to enjoy the side missions here as well. Alright, we're going to move on to the big boy real quick. We're going to talk about the combat. Let's talk about the combat. I know this is like the really big one that's super subjective in pretty much all opinions, but... For me, I feel like the combat is a lot deeper than I initially thought it was. There is Snap Vanishes in there, which I think a lot of people uh, were confused about in my original uh, Beta Thoughts video. Essentially, it's the perfect block system. So once you get the perfect block, it actually snap vanishes you behind your opponent for a full combo. Um, that's what they're using for perfect block instead of just, you know, blocking and then they kind of sway back and all that stuff. Um, I feel like it's a much better version of the perfect block system. It's a just frame as well, so you have to be on point with that. Um, there's also an element of meter management with not only your specials, but also your escape. Now, here's the thing. Your escape meter and your dash meter are the same thing, all right? They're the exact same thing. So if you dash way too much, and you're just dashing all over the place. Um, so basically when you're dashing, it takes away from your meter. So if you do it too much, you could lose your chance to escape from a combo. But at the same time, if you escape a combo and it goes into the red state where it has to refill and you dash as it's refilling, when it's starting to refill, it then goes red again. So then you lose your opportunity to get out of a combo once again. So you got to manage that very smartly because if you dash while recharging it, when it's red, you are going to be hit with a combo and it's going to hurt. Okay, you got to manage that very, very well. Um, another big thing that I actually didn't expect to be in this game, but actually was, is grab teching. Now, if you guys don't know what that is, I don't blame you, but basically what it is, is someone grabs you and, well, you can hit the grab button as well, and then it gets you out of the grab. There are throw techs, which is actually pretty damn cool, and I actually do love that. Um, another big thing that actually was a little bit confusing to some people in my previous beta uh, thoughts video, but I was talking about the ultimate attack system and, and how I loved it. Alright, so the ultimate attack fills up when you're taking damage. So you take damage to pull out an ultimate attack. So when the meter fills up, that's by your uh, character portrait. Um, you can either do two weak ultimates that do basically the same as a normal super. It's really not that much. Basically, you can do it like twice a match, I think, or sometimes three times or four times match. I'm actually not too sure on the number, but basically you can do a weaker ult. But the thing that a lot of people didn't even know is that you actually, once it's full, all the way full red, it's ready to go. Don't just throw out your ultimate like all willy nilly click in the right analog stick and then you awaken and once you awaken and you use your ultimate attack it actually does so much damage like 50 percent of your enemy's health is so much damage especially with some other characters like sasuke with his uh perfect susano it's actually really really good that way and if you save your ultimate for that you're going to be getting a lot more mileage out of it trust me it's just so much better than just throwing out your ultimate when your meter is halfway full it's just it's just a much better way of using it so 
that's my little tip to you guys that's how the ultimate system works you're going to be getting weak ultimates if you don't awaken so awaken when you are going to use your ultimate trust me it's just much better that way all right so moving on to the biggest boy in the room we are going to be talking about the connection and net code well honestly i i, I think the net code is actually perfect like i haven't had a single issue uh playing online at all like zero issues at all no lag no disconnects nothing it's all been really perfect combat nothing wrong with it at all it's honestly just a ton of fun to play right now and honestly nothing to really say on the netcode i can't i can't trash it because it ain't it's it's, it's not bad it really isn't it's actually really good netcode which is a first for games like this so Bondi, whatever you're doing with the netcode, keep it up. Don't fuck this up with a future update, please. Because this is netcode. This is good netcode. We need this in every other anime game out there. All right, guys, that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys did, remember to leave a like, subscribe for more content, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out. It's been casual.